this part from first attack. In this lecture, we're going to deal with the last uh, approximation for integral. Okay, we're going to learn. We call the Simpson's, Simpson's approximation, Simpson's rule. The last of the two, we deal with the one is the middle point, right? Another is a trapezoid. Okay, so we already compared that the two. Okay, among which uh, uh, the middle point is the best, is, is better, right? So this time, we're going to new one. And later, we're going to compare these three, okay? Um, so first, here is the graph. Uh, where the original function is black. So the original function is like this. Okay, we're going to do integration from A to B. Uh, if this function uh, is non-elementary, or means the integral is non-elementary, which means what? We have, uh, we have to go to approximation. So how do you use the Simpson's rule? Simpson is a mathematician, and the which uh, and the who proposed the method. So this time uh, is cut in pieces first, okay, and then for each two link the piece, we do this. We have a one, two, three points, right? Three points. We can exactly resolve a parabola. I mean, a parabola is like a quadratic function. I mean, uh, three number, one, two, three point. We can exactly get a one specific or one unique or unique parabola. And we use this parabola to fit these three points. Why? Because we have A, B, C. Three are no variable, okay? And if we need the three equation, we can solve these three variable. That's unique, see? Simpson proposed we use this uh, parabola to fit and then under the parabola is the area. This uh, parabola is easy to do integration, right? Because there's a power per polynomial function. We easily find the area under the parabola. And then we use the uh, area under the parabola to approximate the original area under the curve. Okay? And this is the first. And we look at the second, P2, P3, P4 use these three points to make a, a unique uh, parabola and then use this area to do approximation for the second part and for the third part I uh, ignore they're going to the last which means uh, pn minus one pn minus one uh, pn minus two pn minus one pn use these three points and then to fit the parabola to approximation the finally we add all uh, this uh, approximation together is the approximator. We call the Simpson's approximation, okay, to do approximation for the original area. Uh, one, I look at it. So one is very important. This time, any it should be an even number. Why? Can you see? The first piece, right, is two points, go to x2. The second piece, I mean, how many, n is uh, even means uh, we need to cut it into even parts, right? Why? Because each one, each area is two parts, two, two, right? So that's an even number, easy to see. Uh, how do you do even divide? Of course, you know, it's here. And uh, we finally, if we add this arrow, this arrow, or the arrow under the parabola together, we have uh, this formula. So can we have a look of this formula? Um, this is Simpson's approximation. We cut it into n pieces, an even number. See, the other axis is the increment, which is here. Over three, and the time is still fx is zero, fx one, fx two, or the value. However, this time, can we see? Uh, the, the coefficient is one, four, two, four, two, four, two, four. The final is one, okay? You can count the count, this is exactly is uh, n is an even number, so this is uh, uh, other terms, other terms, okay, as you can see. Uh, why we have this pattern? And uh, you, do you remember what is the pattern for uh, trapezoid? So let's compare a little, okay. What is the pattern for trapezoid? This is a trapezoid, the Tn. Uh, the, see, very similar. There's two, this go to three. Uh, the coefficient or the pattern is uh, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, right? The first, uh, the end uh, is 1, 
the middle two. That's the pattern or the frequency for trapezoid. What is the new for Simpson's rule? One, and then there's a four, two, four, two, four. See, that's the middle. And then the last is the one. Okay, I mean, the, in the middle you can see, and they change it two to four. And you remember the pattern. One, four, two, four, two, four, two, four. Da, 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 go to four. The last is one. Okay, so we were going to prove why uh, add all the area and the, the parabola together is this formula. I mean, the y sn is this. We are going to prove uh, the next page. And the last, can we see? Is going to find the arrow bound. So this time the arrow bound is this. Uh, the condition a little different. This time is the fourth derivative is uh, bounded by k. Okay, the middle point or uh, trapezoid is the second derivative, right? So this is a little different. Another is the upper bound is different. Now, let's compare uh, the three approximation we learned. So you can we see. Okay, so this is the middle point, the arrow bound for the middle, this is the arrow bound for the middle point, this is the arrow bound for the trapezoid, this is the arrow bound for Simpson. Uh, the first we already compare these two, right? And the middle point is better than uh, trapezoid, right? But can you have a look? Okay, n is the most important part, okay? Because n will increase. When n increases, the upper bound will go decrease very fast. Which one is the least, is the best among the three? Now we can see. Okay, Simpson, the upper bound exactly is the smallest if you compare this. So much smaller, okay? I mean, the arrow goes down to zero much faster than those two methods. Uh, if you want to list them, Simpson is the best, and then a middle point, and then trapezoid, okay? And uh, in conjunct theory, and that the upper bound is very important. Okay. Now I give you one example. How do you, uh, before I give you example, I said how to prove this, right? Okay. So how to prove this? Can we look at it? So I copy uh, this one here. We need to prove why we add all the area together is this form. Be patient. Uh, so the first step, uh, we what we need to do is calculate the area. Okay, and uh, parabola, one by one. Calculate this, calculate this, calculate the all, and then add them together. I copy the first, uh, the first part to here. Can you see? So here the original. Okay, and this is not easy to do. Okay, but we can do shift. Okay, we shift this to, uh, I guess one. We shift to a zero. So this time it looks much better. Why? Uh, because this time the parabola goes to be much easier. Uh, also, the point goes much easier than this point. However, the graph is the same, okay? Just a shift. Okay, you can see it's just a shift. Okay, here is just a shift. Shift that does not affect the area, right? So what do we need to do? Find the area here. Okay, so you can make sure this negative, this uh, that x, negative that x, that x. So this point is negative that x, y0, what is y0? Uh, y0 is the same y0 as that, okay? It means f at uh, uh, x0, okay? You know, this is y0, y1, the y2. And uh, another, this is y0, y1, and the, these are three points also in a parabola, right? The right one's a parabola, okay? So you put it here. And then we can make a y0, y1, y2, and the fit for this equation. Because these three points, each point plug into the formula, get the one equation. We have one, two, three equation. And then later we will use the three equation. Okay, so now look at this. So now we go to calculate the area under the uh, parabola. So this is the parabola equation, quadratic, right? So negative that x to that x. Uh, this is a power function, easy, right? To find the negative value, this is the fundamental. And then going to simplify, see, we get this. Okay, so now that I guess the first is good. How about the second? The second, can you see this? Uh, where do you get this? 
exactly from these equations on uh, the systems. Uh, we will do a little bit of manipulation, you will find it. This one we need is exactly by 0 plus 4y1 plus y2. Okay, and then we plug this into here. We get the uh, formula for the first part of the area under the parabola. And do you remember then what we need to do? See, you find the pattern for each part, for the first part, and then the same pattern for the second part, for all the parts. What we need to do is add all together. So here is simply add, this is the first, right? And then the second, and then the last, okay? And the, the coefficient are the same, we factor it out. And then we we'll compound like a term, okay? Uh, y0 is y0, y1, y2, y2 goes to 2, y2. Y3 is Y3, okay? Y4, Y4 goes to 2, Y4. The same pattern. Yn minus 2 is 2. This is a 4, and this is a 1. Okay, so this is almost. And finally, Y0 is what? It's F, we say, right? Y0 is the height of the first, which is F at the X0. What is Y1? Is this height, which is F at X1. I plug everything in. Can you see? And this final is exactly the same as before. I mean, we finally calculate what is the uh, formula for simple sense rule. Okay, <coughs> is there? Um, now I go you. I show you one example how to do calculation. Okay, the similar example I used in the last two approximation, and uh, this fun this integral is now elementary. We have to do approximation. So the same. Uh, how do you figure out this table? We need the XI. Before we need the uh, we need the xi and then we the most important we need the value of fi. Uh, remember this is the formula I copy here. The pattern of the coefficient is one four two four two da 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 four and the last is one. Okay, and uh, how do you get it? So first here is f right. This is fx. Uh, what is delta x? We know delta x equals uh, b minus a over m was B, 2, was A, 1, was N, is 10. So the questions ask you 10. Uh, use a simple sense uh, method. And be sure later you have to uh, round it to seek a decimal, okay? They ask, uh, we do calculation, here's a point 0.1, okay? So you get a delta x, okay? Another is get all the dividing point. We have a formula, xi equals x0 plus i times delta x. Okay. And each increment is 0.1. So from the beginning, a is 1. Plus delta x is 1.1. .1, plus delta x is 1.2. Delta x goes to 2, right? So we finish xi, the dividing point. And then just evaluate the function at the, value, uh, at the dividing point, and we get all this number. Okay. If we have the table, then we have everything. We only need to do is plug this value into the formula. Right, and then do calculation. But be sure here the longer calculation. If you don't use a calculator, if you don't use a, the table in the calculator, uh, as I showed you in the last two, now I will going to use the table okay, again to find this, find this uh, the final answer in the calculator. Use the table, and the, the same idea. Plug this into L1, and then uh, first we define the function, right? And the second we're going to plug x into L1, L1 column in the table and then apply the function into L1 we find all this value but uh, you remember the pattern or the frequency are different then up uh, type all the frequency to L3 okay to L3 after I type the frequency and then do one variable analysis I will get all of this can we see uh, I get my calculator please wait so here is my calculator. Okay, I use a Texas ID, Texas Instrument 83. If you use 84, it's the similar. Okay, it's very similar. So now, uh, let me open. So first, we define the function, right? The function, you know, is a square root of that. So go to y equals. I already type. So did the function in y one. Good. The second step uh, is going to input all the dividing point x i value into L1 column. Where is L1 column? Stats. Add it. Add it. See, L1 column already typed. 
So that's good. And then the second step. Another step is going to apply the function to L1 and to get all the value. I put all the value to L2, the second column. How to do? Go to the top, okay? highlight the L2, and then going to find the value, the function, which is variable. Okay, go to Y variable, right? See that the function, and and uh, we define the in Y1, good. And then Y1, what the domain L1, second one, parenthesis, and then and. Okay, so I already put all the value here. Okay, so another step now. We need the order frequency, right? I put the frequency into L3. So go to L3. Remember the pattern frequency, the first is 1, and then is 4, 2, uh, no. first is 1, right? The second is 4, 2, um, so wait a little, let me tune so you can see it clearly. Okay. And then one four two four two four two four uh two be careful the last uh, uh this is four see four and then goes to one right and then goes to one okay so that the pattern now what do we need to do go to uh so that again do calculation find the one variable so that's which is the calculate so the first is one variable so that's that's what we need and uh this function upon our data our data is in l2 and l3 how to do second two which is l2 right comma second three which is l3 and uh, and this one is in dexas instrument 3 if yours is 84 uh, L2 is for your data list, access list, for your frequency list is in L3, okay, and then and Okay, now we get the sum 45, okay, now it's 45, okay, I mean the, so far we get what, we get all these parentheses, okay, get the sum, and then what do we need to do, use the sum times uh, 0.1 over 3, okay, we're going to do uh, the sum 45, Point three four five five. Let me get it. Five five six two four three. Okay, this times point one, right? And then divided by three. Okay, and um, so we need to go back. So I think uh, we are. Uh, times point three. Okay, divided by three. Okay, so I type it wrong. Divided by three. Okay, and then okay. So this is the answer. Can we compare? See if it's the same. So one point five one one five four one nine. Okay, rounded to six decimals. That's all. Thank you.